For online teaching, the tool that I wouldn't be without is a document camera or a visualizer because they're the best tool for modeling. Let me know what you call it in your country. Is it a document camera or a visualizer? Many teachers agree that modeling is one of the most fundamental aspects to get right in teaching. And also that modeling is something that you don't lose a great deal when you're doing remote learning or distance learning. So if you're teaching online, having a visualizer, having a document camera can still enable you to do that modeling just as well as you can in a classroom. The main benefit is that they will see you using the actual tools. And this is especially useful for younger learners who maybe aren't actually aware of the correct way to use a calculator, or maybe they aren't skilled in using their geometry set. So things like compasses or set squares, you can model exactly how to use those things. And so they're still picking up those good skills from you, their teacher. They're also amazingly useful if you've got a demo to show, or maybe you've got a particular artifact that you want to discuss in your video lesson. And perhaps you've already got all your documents printed out and you feel really comfortable teaching with a pen. And you know, I would definitely recommend a document camera to be the way to teach online if you're less comfortable with the technology. You can pretty much just put the camera on and then teach as if you're in your classroom. So it's the thing that I wouldn't be without more so than a pen display or a pen tablet. Not that they're not amazingly useful things for teaching online and more coming up on that on a comparison video coming soon. But the thing is that using a pen tablet or a pen display, there is a necessarily a difference between the way that you're teaching and the way that students are learning. So there's a bit of a disconnect there. Assuming that is that your students are still using pen and paper themselves. You modeling something in the same way that they're doing it themselves makes more of a direct link between your teaching on their screen and coding that information into their brains. This is one of the reasons why modeling is so powerful. So all you need to teach online with a document camera is you need one with a USB connection. This is the Joy using V508 and it's a fully featured visualizer, but they have other visualizers in this series that just have a USB connection if that's all you need. I really do recommend getting a visualizer with full features, especially that HDMI out, because you'll thank yourself when we do eventually get back to teaching in a classroom and you don't need to connect this to the computer to be able to show your screens at the front of your classroom on the projectors. Just to say this is not a sponsored video, but Joy Using did send me this particular visualizer to test out. You can see my full review of it here. But in short, what I really like about it is all of those features, all of that connectivity, but I really like this, the extra fill light. So you're not having these harsh shadows on your work while you're writing, because that could be quite distracting for the students sitting at home. And the USB only version also has that fill light. This one also writes things to an SD card and there's a little mini operating system on here as well, which is really cool for you to do things like picture in picture or refer back to your previous lessons. Again, all without having to plug in your computer. Let me know if you'd like a video with a bit of a buying guide for visualizers or document cameras and all the different features that you can get and what to look for. So here's a few things that you need to make sure you get right. You need to make sure that students can full screen your camera because this will appear, once it's plugged into the USB, it will appear as an ordinary camera. And therefore, your meeting software, Google Classroom, Teams, or Zoom, will presume it's like a webcam of somebody's face, and it will automatically put you in the kind of gallery mode. You don't want them squinting at something you're writing because it's just appearing as a normal small webcam in a kind of gallery mode meeting. So make sure you look into whatever software you're using and find the way, there will be a way, to present that camera as full screen. You can get around that and know exactly what students are looking at by either using a share window function, so you could have visualizer or ordinary camera software on your computer and just share that window, or by sharing a screen. And that's the way I like to do it. I like to just use this screen here and I know that whatever I'm teaching, my students are looking at whatever is on that screen. So I can drag across a camera window or I can add I can add a spreadsheet or I can add a browser window. So I definitely suggest that if you have access to a second screen, make that your teaching screen and you can organize windows on there and know that the students are just looking at whatever's on that screen. But remember that whatever you are broadcasting to them, they may not be watching it on a screen as large as yours. They may be watching it on a smaller, lower resolution display, and they may be watching it within a window, which has already got lots of controls around the edge and it's shrinking that screen down. So make sure whatever you're presenting to them is nice and large 
you've got the document camera nice and zoomed in so the writing is large enough on the screen. And I'm all about connections with online teaching. It's really important to maintain that connection. So just ask them, can you read really clearly what I'm writing and what's printed on my papers here? Or do I need to zoom in a little bit? And solve those technical problems for them. Make sure as well that they can hear you nice and loud and clear. And it's well worth investing in an external microphone, not just relying on the one in the webcam in your laptop, because it may not be quite as high quality. There's a video here on choosing the best microphone for online teaching. Finally, and my top tip, if you really want to get whiz with this, is consider using something like OBS Virtual Camera. OBS can broadcast as if it is a webcam to Teams or Google Classroom or Zoom. That will give you loads of control over exactly what they're seeing, and it will enable you to switch between different views that you've already set up seamlessly in the lesson. It can make it look really slick. And anything you can do to get technology out of the way of learning is a really useful thing to do. OBS it has a bit of a learning curve, but perhaps try ManyCam, which you have to pay for, but is a bit more of an intuitive interface and it will enable you to do all of those things, set up different views and switch between them seamlessly. So that's it, that's how to teach online with a document camera and that's why they're such useful things. They're the best thing for modeling and trust me, getting one of those, you will maybe not use it every single second of your lesson, but the moments you will be using it for those modelings, showing demonstrations, showing artifacts on the screen, you will find it really, really useful and your students will thank you for it. It could be as simple as you just need to show them how to use a calculator whilst you're doing that part of the teaching of the lesson. So being able to switch to that view and show them exactly what buttons to press in real time with them able to ask you questions and for you to model it with them is a really, really useful thing and can help break that barrier that we have at the moment with online teaching.